everyone welcome to money life this is sucheta dilal this time i'm going to talk about vedanta and its plans to take its indian company private by buying back the shareholding of minority investors the company which is owned by scrap dealer turned global industrialist and billionaire anil agarwal is a company which has nearly 50% shareholding in the public domain so the promoters hold just a little over 50% and over 48.9 nearly 49% is held by minority shareholders so in the middle of this whole covid pandemic when people are concerned and upset about what's going to happen to the economy and their businesses mr agarwal has come up with an offer to buy back shares at a steep discount to book value obviously it's created enormous outrage among all shareholders now why is this a problem before we discuss this let's put it in a context so today you have the finance minister appearing on television every day to announce some kind of economic stimulus you have all heads of industry as well as industry associations who i call lobbying organizations on television all the time hectoring government about what giving a stimulus in fact a bailout to a lot of industries it is well warranted especially when it comes to msme but when big industry houses which get face time with policy makers and government every single day are demanding a bailout don't you think that it behoves them to also look at the bad eggs among them who are taking advantage who are taking opportunistic advantage of the covid pandemic well mr agarwal is one of them certainly i mean look at what he has done now again there's one more point over here this is not a pandemic related issue in fact for two years before this lots of investors especially those who come from mutual funds as well as investors of pmc bank yes bank ilfs have seen their wealth decimated because of corporate honchos because of the failure of ilfs because of the failure of yes bank and every one of these were run to the ground by some individuals who were in charge of running them each of these ILFS Diwan Housing uh, Yes Bank have been the biggest promoters and sponsors of every industry seminar held by CII Asocham so they were the toast of industry they were speaking everywhere when the going is good these are the guys who are the faces of industry they are the fronts of lobbying organization when things go bad the organizations just clamp down and say nothing and the people who are responsible for decimating investors wealth well you know they spend some time in jail but you know how long our legal system takes now let's look at vedanta vedanta has always been controversial it used to be known as sterlite every single deal that it has done has not been without controversy it has ridden everything every storm without a problem Mr Agarwal has grown and grown and grown he's been unstoppable he's today a global industrialist now what is he doing in 2018 he took Vedanta Resources PLC private that was equally controversial now he's doing it with the indian company mr agarwal is into mining and into oil he owns kane energy and this has been one of the most profitable companies has been giving paying out hefty dividends has investments by LIC and mutual funds it's a well liked company because who doesn't like a company that big pays big dividends now listen to what he's doing so mr agarwal has announced a buyback of shares at a floor price of 87.50 this when its book value is 177 and its 52 week high low with whatever ups and downs in the market has been the highest price has been 180 so he is offering this buyback at a much lower price could it could well be that this is a deliberately low price even before the board meeting which is going to look at the arguments that the company makes on behalf of buying back the shares and taking the company private we have a report from standard and poor the rating agency which talks about why this is good for vedanta vedanta not india Vedanta Resources PLC because that is what is being rated remember it is a company that pays the rating agency but 
let's leave that aside for a while here's what snp says snp says that the successful privatization of vedanta would improve vedanta resources access to the subsidiary company's cash flows this will be due to a more efficient dividend upstreaming which means so at the moment 50% of it goes to minority investors so most of it is going to go to the parent and snp also says that it may improve the rating of vedanta resources this is clearly the argument that's going to be put before the board but the board has to decide what is going to say about the fact that it's anti minority investors in india so let's see what happens at on the 18th meanwhile the reason for getting rid of minority investors is very clear there's a global recession looming it's a opportunity to take advantage frighten people think that this is the best price there is companies have got listed using all kinds of strategies over the last 10 years i think this dozens and dozens of companies that have got listed unlisted and gone private what do they do there is a process called reverse book building where minority investors are allowed to make bids and decide the price now it's not as easy and simple as it sounds because most of the time minority investors do not participate in the bidding process a small segment of them does a lot of times a company arranges things so that minority investors who matter are already on their side so a reverse book building process will take place there will be a board meeting there's a good chance that the floor price of 87 will increase but maybe this is all planned because even at an increase it will be made to seem as so it's a victory for investors you remember proxy companies have castigated this deal they called it optionism they called it out for being optionism but do you, if you ask me nothing is going to change because the company will just ride the storm increase the price a little bit and go ahead with the buyback offer let me hope that i'm wrong and let's hope that the independent directors on this board which include like i said the former semi semi chairman decide something different one of the things to remember when we talk about vedanta is that a number of large groups have controversially tried this route and nobody has really paid the price public memory is short and it's forgotten the sr group delisted a lot of companies in india and abroad at low prices there's been controversy Of course SR has been a big defaulter so let's keep that aside because Sterlite and Vedanta are different they're profitable there are no issues you remember DLF which built all of built all of Gurgaon it did something equally dubious so in 2003 a long time ago it delisted when they were going through a bad recession in the realty industry it's happening again now 3 years later when things were beginning to look up it wanted to relist in the middle of a lot of fanfare and at that time the company owned over 90% 99% of its shares 0.5% was held by minority investors who were holding fast to their holding doesn't matter that it was delisted the company tried a lot of dubious strategies to get rid of even those 0.5 so that they don't benefit from the upside of the company being relisted it went to court it caused a lot of controversy and eventually the company had to give in because sebi ordered them to do so and 2007 it got relisted after taking care of minority investors what did it do to the company obviously gave them a bad reputation for governance i don't think the company has ever recovered when it was being relisted it was touted as another infosys by its pr agencies it didn't happen that way Now let's look at the background of Sterlite and Vedanta. When I said that Mr. Agarwal started as scrap dealer and today he is one of the biggest mining and oil company owners in the world, nothing has stopped him on the way. In 1998 when Harshad Mehta who was the main key person key accused in the security scam of 92 was trying to make a comeback He did it. He set up a group of companies called the Mayanti Group, which he used to start ramping up the share price of three companies. So his comeback strategy was exactly what he did in '92 and got into trouble. So the three companies. Now he always tied up with the promoters. The three companies that he tied up with, believe it or not, were BPL, Videocon, and Sterlite. 
I've written a lot about them. I've written about it in 98. Now, the two that got into trouble led, it to, led to a serious investigation of them. Sterlite rode on, got away with the controversy. There was a SEBI investigation. Nothing ever happened. Videocon also got away in 98, but it's in deep, deep trouble just now because its way of doing business finally caught up with it. Now, Sterlite is what I would call, in, in a sense, a habitual offender. It's not the only thing that it's got in trouble with. If you look at things that we have reported globally about its environmental practices and human rights, in fact, even its tuticorin plant in 2018 was shut down after public protests over the plant led to a police firing in which 13 people were killed. The plant remains shut even today. Did it affect Vedanta? No. Its Odisha company was in serious trouble. It created an international problem. So what did it do? It got its international company go private. Over there, there are a bunch of activists, including Bianca Jager, who had bought small shares so that they could go and attend AGMs and embarrass the company. What did the company do? Just shut it down. It's gone private. No, not shut down as in the company being shut down. Shut down the noise around it because there was no longer an AGM. When you go private, you're no longer listed on exchanges. There's no need for an annual general meeting. So company is unaffected. It rides through the storm. It knows how to build political linkages. So I've written about how in spite of strict FERA rules, which did not allow the international company to donate to political parties, it was caught donating even before 2014, before this government came in place. The former finance minister, P. Chidambaram, has been on its board and has been its legal advisor. So obviously a lot of things that happened when he was the finance minister, he had a lovely way of turning a blind eye to it. Nothing ever happened to Sterlite. It just went on and on. So today when I look at social media posts which say, that don't worry, hold tight, you know, people will fight it out, they can't get away with it. I'm a little skeptical. Companies who have wanted to get rid of their minority shareholders and go private have done it by hook or by crook. They have managed to do several rounds of delisting, so they make an offer, they go through reverse book building multiple times, keep reducing the shareholding. Once it reaches 75%, the company gets delisted. The remaining shareholders in some companies you know, they have kept doing buybacks until it reached 90. After it reached, their shareholding reached 90%, they have sent checks to investors and just got them out. It was a take it or leave it situation. Shareholders had no option. Why? Because the regulator remains silent and does nothing. Here, a former regulator is even on their board. It tells you the kind of clout that this company has. Will it make any difference? I have no idea. We need to see on May 18th. Let's hope that this time is different. Let's hope that I'm wrong and I'm extra cynical. It's time we get some good news. It's time we have a government that stands up for us and says we will not allow it. If we are going to bail out industry, we are not going to allow you to take opportunistic advantage of this. You do nothing for people who lose money in PMC Bank. You do nothing to, for 81 bondholders who lose money. You do nothing about a Franklin Templeton. At least step up and ensure that a Vedanta does not buy off people really cheap. It's not allowed to delist. If you, if you have, as a government, if you have an order which says people should keep paying salaries, companies should keep paying salaries whether or not their businesses are running, then hey, tell Vedanta that you cannot delist, you cannot stop paying dividends as long as you're profitable at a time like this. You cannot take advantage of a COVID pandemic. Let's see what happens. Thank you.